remember what the haters talking about. What's up, family? If you have not done so already, after you subscribe, there's a little bell next to your subscribe button. Go ahead and click that thing right now so you can get your notifications each time I drop a new video like this. That way you'll be in the loop. Make sure you select all notifications. If you don't, there's a chance you may not get any. Also, smash up the likes, smash up the likes, smash up the likes. When you see those videos on your right side, on your phone or your computer, that is YouTube's algorithm at work. And it helps with my video placements on YouTube. Let's put it in their face. Help me out there. Okay, let's get into it. I saw this topic on The Breakfast Club and I said, you know what, that would be a very interesting discussion to share with my subscribers. What comes first? Who comes first? Your significant other or the children? That is an age old question and debate. Now, the reason why they were having this discussion is because of something that Terry Crews said when he was addressing Gabrielle Union and other black women who had supported him when he went public about his rape allegations and they were complaining that he was not doing the same thing, like he wasn't returning the favor in supporting her with her current uh, complaint against America's Got Talent, the company that he's currently working for. Well, that's not the company, but that's the show that he's working on. Now, he said that the only woman or the only person on this earth that he has to please is his wife, Rebecca. Not his mother, not his sister, not his daughters, not his co-workers. Now, before I can get into who comes first, I got to kind of like pinpoint how is he using please? Is he saying please as far as making happy and satisfied? Or is he talking about considering only his wife's wishes before he acts or proceeds? Let's talk about priority. I look at my children and the woman that I'm with in a committed relationship with, whether it be married or otherwise, equally. The decisions that I make, however, is going to be determined by individual needs. Now, if we're talking about making a household decision, then I have to consult with my woman, the lady of the house, because that is the foundation. The man and the woman is the foundation of the house and they got to be on point. They got to be on point at all times. They have to be in agreement. Sometimes you give in a little bit, you know, sometimes you hold firm, but the man and the woman got to be on point, and here's why. Because if they're not, the children will pit them against one another. You be over here, you go to work, and your kids be playing football and all in the, what they call that, the, uh, the band and stuff, and you told them, look, you grounded. But you going to work, and you running a night shift, your kids all in band practice, <laughs> you know? And each time that something like that happens where dad say no and mom say yes or mom say yes and dad say no, 
behind one another's back, the kids lose a little bit more respect. And the parents lose authority. They lose a little bit more authority. So it is absolutely important for the man and the woman to be on the same page. I know so many people who have basically broke their homes up, broken their homes up because they've allowed their children to play them against each other. When you look at these households where the woman and the man, the father and the mother is in unison, you're looking at a more structured household, a stronger household. So that's my position. If we're going to talk about pleasing in the sense of considering what the woman's, uh, what her uh, wishes are for a particular you know, situation or some type of choice that we have to make for our household, then I got to ride with her on that decision. But every decision that I make is going to be made in consideration of every single person that's living in that household. So I would not make a decision and just be like, well, I'm going to do this no matter how you feel, you know, your feelings are invalid. I wouldn't do something like that because sometimes you have spouses who ain't really got a lot of sense. That would not be me. I wouldn't be in a relationship with a woman who ain't got a lot of sense. I wouldn't be in a relationship with a woman who acts irrationally, a woman who is not a logical thinker. So being in a relationship with a woman who I trust, I trust her views, I trust her opinions. Between the both of us, we'll get it right. So that decision that's made is going to be made between her and I at the end of the day. We're going to have the last say-so. My spouse is going to have the last say-so, not my children. That's the way I rock. Now, some of y'all, I don't care what's going on. Y'all be like, my children come first. My children come first. And you're still by yourself. But you got them children. And the thing about it, those children are going to grow up one day and they are going to leave you and you're going to be by yourself. This happens all the time. Of course, your spouse can leave you also. But those kids are guaranteed to leave you. That is guaranteed. If you want it to work out, all you got to do is watch some of these older couples and you'll see how it goes. Talk to them. Talk to the people who's been in long-term relationships and ask them how they've been able to hold it together. I can guarantee you nine times out of ten, I will tell you, well, all decisions come through us first. We agree. We make sure that we have a united front and then we tell the kids this is what it's going to be. Just like if you were running a comp company, you know, management makes the decisions and they pass it down to the employees. You and your spouse are management. The kids are the employees. <laughs> that's just the way it is. At least that's the way it is for me. And that works. But let me know what works for you. Drop a comment. No more talk. What the ladies talking about? Yeah.